it's an interesting blurring between what the in-memory column store does and what an index does. I did a video recently, which I'll link somewhere here, which talked about the fact that you can now get 16 gigabytes of in-memory column store for free in more recent versions of the Oracle database. I thoroughly encourage you to take advantage of it. Now, stepping back to a more philosophical discussion about the in-memory column store, what it's doing is it's a structure in which you can take queries which were previously running slowly, and now they run quicker because they're using this new structure. That sounds a lot like an index, doesn't it? That's what an index does. You add a structure to the database in order to make queries perform faster. So we can sort of blur the lines between what an index is and what the in-memory column store is. And if we can sort of get our heads around that blurring, then I'd like to introduce you to a facility called an in-memory text index, which is sort of an index sort of an in-memory column store, it sits in that middle ground I just alluded to. I look after the Ask Tom database and we take questions in from the community. We've got 30, 40, 50,000 of them nowadays, and it's all stored in a TLOB. So this is a good example for an in-memory text index. I'll take my questions table and take the question column, which is a TLOB, and I'll use this new clause, which is make it an in-memory text index. That in itself is not enough to make the questions table a candidate for using the in-memory column store. So I'll do alter my questions table and move it into the in-memory column store so it can now take advantage of that in-memory text index. If I look at all tab columns for my questions table, in fact, all tab col, so I can see the hidden ones as well, you can see there's this new cryptic column that's been added. It is a complicated internal expression which then takes advantage of the contents of the club column, parsing out bits and pieces of all the text words, etc., and storing that representation in the in-memory column store. And here's where things get a little bit interesting in terms of that blurring between index and the in-memory store. If I go look at all indexes, you can see there is no definition of an index for my questions table, or at least on this particular column. If there's no index, normally that would mean I could not use a contains clause but I can go ahead and write a contains query on my questions table now. In this case, I'm looking for any question that someone's provided that contains the term UTL match, and up comes a list of email addresses of people who submitted such questions. When I look at the execution plan for that query, we can see we did table access full of the in-memory column store. However, if we look at the filtering information, we can start to see the kind of internal expressions that were used to access the text elements of the index that are stored in the in-memory column store. So the cool thing here is that my table sits outside the in-memory column store, but the text index or the components thereof that will satisfy a contains clause are stored in the in-memory column clause without the overhead that would conventionally come with a full text index, namely the six or seven underlying tables and indexes that are built normally in the data dictionary. It's an interesting blurring between what the in-memory column store does and what an index does, both being structures that improve the performance of queries. In this case, we now have an index structure that only sits in the in-memory column store in order to make text queries blazingly fast without the overhead of lots of underlying database objects.